Mr. Transfer is 96 here with my video review of the uh, Fantastic Four movie. So yeah, so I'm filming this August 7th, the, the day it comes out. I did see it last night though on Thursday, so yeah. So overall, before I start talking about the movie, before when they were first announcing things about the movie, how I felt, first they announced the younger cast. I was completely against that. Um, that was very disappointing. And then the fact they announced that Doctor Doom was... Um, gonna be just a hack or you know stuff like that they, they they announced things that really pissed a lot of people off from the very beginning then however they released a trailer that was pretty good I you know everybody thought it was a pretty good trailer it had a had a very realistic tone for some of the goofy things that sounded like they were doing um, as well as a, a dark tone which I think really sets it apart from the original um, two Fantastic Four films so that was a good idea I thought and just the, the trailer really gave a lot of people some hope and by the time the trailer came out everybody I think was adjusted to the fact that we'd be we, uh, that we were getting a younger Fantastic Four, so that wasn't quite a surprise anymore or anything like that. Then the reviews started coming out, which were pretty bad. Um, I tried to completely stay away from them, though, so I could have a completely fresh take on the movie and not be swayed um, by uh, any reviews or anything. So, yeah, so I saw the movie, and here's my opinion on it. Um, first of all, I, uh, um, I was gonna say, oh yeah, typically when I do a movie review, I film like my toys and I, because I'm a toy collector and I, you know, review the movie. Um, but unfortunately, I found out that obviously because it's Fox, there are no, there isn't a toy line for this movie. And I don't have a single Fantastic Four toy aside from Doctor Doom. I've got a, a ton of Doctor Doom figures, but I have not a single figure of any of the four Fantastic Four members. So I decided just to go with a picture. Overall, starting off, the whole origin I thought was quite good. Um, up until they got their super, um, their superpowers, I really enjoyed the movie. I thought it was quite good. I thought the younger cast worked, um, and I liked some of their, uh, you know, their aspects, their plot points. Um, I liked the fact that you know the the main character is super smart. Obviously, Mister Fantastic, he is like one of the smartest people in the Marvel universe. So it's nice that they really did uh, make him like that in the movie. I liked his relationship with Ben as well. Um, you know, I thought that that was good, and their their friendship, although they're so different, it seemed real. You know, I, I really believe that they were friends. So I lo really like that. Um, Johnny Storm, I liked the a lot that he you know felt like his father liked his adopted um, um, uh, child better than his actual child. I thought that was a great plot point, and I uh, I wish that they would have expanded a little bit more on that, um, which it seems like they tried to, it just didn't work. Um, and then Sue being uh, smart and having trouble with her brother because he kind of resents her. So I like that their, their being siblings was very good as far as what they did with it. Um, that's something that we completely did not see in the other uh, Fantastic Four for obvious reasons. So it is wonderful to get it in this movie. I thought that that was a great um, trait. So now, uh, just talking about how they got their superpowers. So they go to this new dimension, and um, one thing that was I thought was going to really bother me when I first saw the trailers was I didn't understand how they would let you know just a bunch of kids go to this other dimension to test it out and. To, uh, even more than that, I had no idea why they would let just some random kid's friend, you know, Ben Grimm go. It made no sense to me. So I was very happy with how they did it in the movie, that they actually weren't supposed to go. Um, you know, they were going to bring in NASA to, to test it out. And they kind of got drunk, you know... Um, uh, Mr. Fantastic, the Human Torch, and Doctor Doom, and they you know, started talking about it. And the reason that they gave for going with the Apollo example, I thought was very good. And uh, and the fact that they did call Ben made sense this time, and it wasn't like they auth actually authorized him to go. So I thought that that was great that they went on their own accord. Although Sue didn't go, I was surprised that um, I was very surprised that she didn't go. Uh, they got their powers. They, you know, a weird kind of planet where the, there's some green, you know, stuff. They, they don't really explain it um but it's it's so foreign of an idea that they don't really need to explain it you know we kind of get it you know it, obviously to them they don't understand it so it makes sense that the audience doesn't understand it either uh so they get their powers and i like the way that they tried to to at least tell you why they got their powers at least with um human torch and the thing the thing was uh the ben Grimm's door was open so the rocks were hidden him which made kind of sense why his power is to turn into rocks and then with the human torch you know the the glass of his cockpit kind of blew open and fire came in which you know makes sense why he kind of turned into a human torch they didn't really do anything to explain um um 
Mr. Fantastic or uh, um, Sue, though. They were kind of just random as to how they got their powers. Um, and then they come back, and the, the, the kind of blast from it, it uh, affects the Invisible Woman. So, overall, you know, at least they tried to give you an example of oh, how they got their superpowers. I think that that's a hard thing to do, because they're all so different, but yet they're supposed to get their powers from the same thing. So, you know, I think they did it the best that they could. From then on is the problem for me. I enjoyed the movie from the point where they got their superpowers. Once they got their superpowers, um, when they were first being tested on it, I like that, you know, it seemed very realistic and very dark and just scary for them, you know, obviously like it would be. So I enjoyed that a lot. Um, but then they have Mr. Fantastic Escape and they say one year later. From then on, the movie really crashes for me. Um, I felt like they opened up new plot points uh, as far as between the siblings, um, uh, Human Torch and Invisible Warren, they opened up a new pot line of uh, he wanted to, you know, uh, be involved in the military and stuff, and he, he just liked his powers, so he wanted to uh, to just start fighting and stuff. He didn't want to fix it, while Sue didn't want to fight. She didn't want to be under the government's control, and she wanted to fix it. And then you've got Ben Grimm being upset with Mr. Fantastic for abandoning, uh, abandoning him and not... Um, uh, helping him. These are all really good plot points. I think that they're very nice. The only problem is they're super underdeveloped. We are understood the plot lines and then they are never resolved in a feasible way. The only way they get resolved is when they start fighting Doom. They're like, oh, we've got to pull together now. So then they pull together and beat them and then that's it. They're all good friends now. So the plot points are opened. They're just never closed or, or they're closed in the most rushed way possible. So that was extremely annoying. Um, um, I would have definitely, and the problem is, like, it seems like this movie was just shot too many scenes that they had to, you know, get the movie down in time, um, yet this movie is only an hour and 40 minutes. They could have easily given us an extra 20, 30 minutes um, of scenes to explain some of this stuff. Uh, there's just so much that's just unexplained once they get their superpowers. Uh, it's unbelievable, and really some missed opportunities. Um, uh, and sometimes, once they have their superpowers, I felt like a lot of the times, the dialogue is just red. It's not quite um, acted, basically. I feel like there's some really stale dialogue once they have their powers. Um, it's it's unfortunate, because sometimes their they're acting is quite good, and sometimes it just goes into, I'm just reading the line. Um, Doctor Doom. Now, the fact that he, they turned him into kind of a, uh, a socially awkward uh, hacker was... An interesting point obviously made a lot of people upset, and if you're a big Doctor Doom fan, it's going to piss you off something fierce. But um, for me, it was all right. You know, I was very upset when I first heard it, but seeing it in the movie, it was fine. You know, they did, they kind of grazed over him being a secluse and hacker, and they they got him working with them quite fast, which just allowed you to see his relationship with all of them. You could see his friendship with them, which I liked. I liked that a lot. I liked the fact that he was kind of friends with them. Um, but at the same time, he was a little jealous of some of them, as well as um, uh, uh, wanting to be with uh, Invisible Woman. I thought that those were all really good plot points. And I love the fact that he was like a friend to them. I, I think that that makes his um, turn to evil even more severe, although they didn't really like explain that at all. Um, so then that's my problem. Once he gets his superpower, we see him at the very, you know, like end, um, they, you know, they, they come and they bring him back from that other dimension and all of a sudden he's got a plan to kill everybody, that's it. You know, he says that he loves the other planet and that's basically it. What this movie needed for Doctor Doom for sure, oops, I've been talking for so long my screen's gone off. Um, what they needed for Doctor Doom absolutely was to show us a scene just in the middle of their transformation when they're still all trying to build the um, the device to get to the other world. They should have showed us a scene with him kind of living secludedly, kind of losing his mind and becoming more attached to the environment as his, you know, suit is fused with him and as he's, you know, struggling to live type of thing and start to go insane and love the environment and stuff like that and uh, decide to destroy everybody else. And they could do that entire thing in two minutes with no dialogue. Uh, they could have really done it. So I would have loved to see that to make it just make sense sense because all of a sudden we see him and he's got a plan to take over the world just boom or destroy the world actually um so that was very disappointing uh the way that dr doom looks i thought it was a really nice effort um i you know it, it showed that they tried to make it somewhat 
comic-like, but in a completely different fashion, and something that's completely different from the original Doctor Doom. So I like that a lot. Um, although the suit fusing onto his skin I thought is a great idea, um, and, you know, kind of with the mask, you know, makes it kind of look like he's got that metal face, but he does look a little strange. I like the green glow throughout his entire face and body, and I love the fact that his pupils are green, so, you know, his pupils are just CGI. Um, I like it a lot. I think that looks cool. I think that the suit is missing a lot, but um, it is pretty neat in some manners. The whole kind of cape that he wears, the hoodie is just like round. I hate that. Like it doesn't lay on his head. It feels like the Hot Toys Mandarin figure, you know? That figure, the hoodie just kind of sticks up and it's really high up until you use the magnetic pieces to get it to lay flat and get the sides to fold on his shoulders and get the top to lay over his head. Well, it never really happens for this movie. In this movie, Doctor Doom just has this big huge circle around his head when he's wearing the hood, which I think is dumb looking. <laughs> so I wish that they would have fixed that. Um, I liked how dark it was in some points. Like, when Doctor Doom starts killing people, it's pretty severe. Like, I, you know, close to an R rating, I would say. He blows up a guy's head inside his mask, so just blood splats over the walls. And then when he's just walking down the hallway, this is my favorite scene of the movie, when Doctor Doom is walking down the, the, these couple hallways, and just as he's walking down, he is just killing all, everybody who's just standing there doing, and, you know, he's not doing anything to kill them. He's just using his mind or his powers or whatnot. But the, just blood splats on the wall whenever somebody dies, and then they fall over. I thought that that was just gruesome and cool. So I love that scene, I have to say. Um, that was one really nice thing. All right, so quickly, I'm running uh, uh, I'm running down here. Not, not too much to say anymore. But there's three really annoying things to me that don't destroy the movie, though. Like, if the movie had fixed a lot of its plot issues and timing and everything, that it would have uh, and left these three things in, it wouldn't have been a big bother to me. But they are something that I, I definitely wanted to mention. First of all, the CGI, like on the thing and stuff, looked pretty good. But the green screen doesn't look good in a lot of places. When, they're, when they first go to the other planet, it doesn't it looks like they are just in front of a green screen. It really doesn't look too realistic, as well as when the thing is trying and the army people are trying to capture Mr. Fantastic in the forest. I felt like the, um, I don't think that that was filmed in a forest at all. I think that that was green screen, and it seemed to be quite obvious that it was. So that was very disappointing. Um, the thing's voice, I, it's, it doesn't match. It really doesn't match, and I thought that as the movie went on, I would get more used to it. Um, but I didn't, and every single time he spoke, it kind of made me cringe. Uh, I I just don't like it. It didn't seem realistic, and it didn't match what he was saying as well as it didn't match his uh, his his look. They they tried to kind of dub it to give him a stronger voice, but they should have went. They should have turned the dial up on that and made it even more so because it didn't fit for me. And then my last annoying thing that annoyed me so much was the the um. The, the, the scientist guy who was originally kind of running the program, um, not their father, but the, but the other guy who also played the leader in the Hulk movie, uh, you know, he, he's a fine actor, I don't mind him at all, but uh, he is, once they transform into the superheroes, he chews gum, and I kid you not, in every single scene. I, I'm serious, he, there is not a scene, once they are transformed, that he is not chewing gum in. And it just makes no sense. Like in the beginning of the movie, he doesn't chew gum at all. The, the middle to the end, there isn't a single scene where he isn't chewing gum. And he's in quite a few scenes. And and even when he's in, like, the, the big, like, hazmat suits, where he's going in, you know, and, and to, to talk to Doctor Doom, he's chewing gum when he's in one of those suits. I, I know that they, they try to make him annoying because you're not supposed to like him, but oh my god, when they were filming it, did they not think, you know, maybe we should have a scene or two, especially when he's wearing the suit, that we don't have him chewing gum? It's so annoying. Like, that thing, oh my god, the, the, I, I know I might be going overboard here, but I wanted to just shoot myself when he was chewing gum in every single scene. And every single time I saw him, I was like, okay, this must be the scene where he's not chewing gum because they've got to put one in here and they don't. He's chewing gum from the time that they have superpowers to the time that he dies. He dies with a piece of gum in his mouth. It is so annoying really quick. I definitely wanted to get that out there because it annoyed the crap out of me. Overall, this movie had awesome, 
awesome potential. And in the beginning, I really liked it. it. It set itself apart from the original Fantastic Four completely. It had some really interesting plot points and a, uh, a really interesting foundation and an idea. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't... As, as soon as they get to a certain part in the movie, they stopped executing it properly at all. It seemed very lazy and rushed. Um, and possibly it's not the director's fault. Like, possibly he shot a lot of scenes that would help explain some of these plot points that really never get resolved. And some scenes that made Doctor Doom's transcendence to evil more um, uh, noticeable. And, you know, not just so out of the blue. And, and things like that. But, um, unfortunately, maybe the studio wanted the, the time to be really short so that they could fit an extra showing of it in each theater every day. Um, I'm not quite sure, but that might be the case. Uh, or it's just the director that just got lazy or is just really unexperienced. Overall, awesome potential that just fails. Um, still, you know, it can be a fun time. Obviously, you gotta see it if you're a superhero fan. Um, but it, it was quite disappointing. And one of the most disappointing superhero movies of, um, of recent years, I have to say. Although, I went into it not really expecting much, so it's not like a big blow for me or anything. But it is something worth noting that it is quite disappointing, which is a shame, because it had some really, uh, really good bones to go on, I have to say. So there you go, that's my review of the Fantastic Four movie. Also, there's nothing after the credits, so don't don't stay. You know, I stayed, and just about everybody in the theater stayed, and then nothing came up, and everybody, you know, sighed in, in disappointment. But yeah, so overall, there you go. Thanks so much for watching.